Hi there, welcome to the latest discussions within the Noah Presgrove case. Today we're going to be taking a look at some new posts on one of the Facebook pages. Retrospective look at a Snapchat post timestamp at around the time of 5.30 or so, which was originally intended to go against Caden Pressey's timeline, if you remember. I mean, there might be a level of doubt and questioning. We just catch up there, see what people have had to have said recently. If there's any follow-ups, new information going about, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? And then another post as well. The comment section from the last video that I did, where we looked at a high-profile individual that has been charged alongside some very serious offences. If you do want to learn more about that and the backstory, be sure to check my previous video out including a video that I uploaded today earlier to do with a new case that I've recently covered to do with Texas. A very creepy, disturbing outcome. If you want to follow that official full timeline video, both will be available to watch and you can locate them top right corner of the screen where the eye symbol is. Click up there at any point today or whenever you've got time, you'll see the drop down box and then feel free to catch up. I'll provide the full playlist as well to the Noah Presgrove case in case you've missed out on some videos. Because the reality is not everyone, not all viewers would have seen every video that I've done on this case because I have been absolutely relentless. And the only thing that has stopped me is when stuff is out of my control. As example, the internet in recent time. It just so happened that yesterday the internet went down again, but it was earlier on in the day. Um, so I was still able to get on with things later, but nevertheless, it just slows down everything. It's not exactly ideal, is it? But either way, just going to try and catch up with the recent discussions, see what people have got to say, I add, I add on my thoughts and whatnot. Welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere. Share your thoughts and opinions in the live chat box on the right hand side of the screen. And for those that have supported the channel recently or however ago it was, credit to those people. If you do want to support this channel, you want to power on in with the momentum, whatever that is, don't worry, down below in the comment section under this video, you'll see a pinned message by me with additional links if you do want to support this channel. And for anyone else that just wants to share their thoughts and opinions on this case, this video discussion at hand, any questions, anything, let me know down below. Comments can help spread awareness on videos and videos spread awareness to a wider reach, a broader audience out there who can learn about the case. It's a chain reaction positive chain reaction. That's why it's important to do so. With that all being said, uh, I think what we should do is just get straight into it and begin on Facebook. Here we are. Um, I'm just going to adjust it to the newest. We've got that post there, but I believe it's this one. First of all, we've got Valentina Ilieva. I don't know if that's another Russian or not. <laughs> Probably not. 12 hours ago. What if the video was actually entered into evidence? What if it was part of a plea bargain that one of the men changing Noah's shorts had made? Is this case, in this case, no one else might know about it other than the defense attorney and a prosecutor judge, not even investigators like the ones interviewing Caden. What if the video was entered in as evidence? Right, so this is to do with the highway. Caden Pressy mentioned it in the private interview with the police guys. All comments. Let's see what the reactions are. Beckett, to be honest, LE very well could have it. They sure aren't going to update us. Usually LE makes arrest and then hold a press conference, so who knows, but we've not seen a press conference yet. Beth responds, I'm sure hope that the case and this video has entered into the right hands and sounds like it has. Hopefully this is progress for Justice for Noah. Let's go. I wonder what other evidence they have as well, like his shoes, hair, saliva. What, um, like his shoes? I mean, it's already been mentioned in the official autopsy report that the shoes were recovered, unless you're referring to the missing Adidas one. As for the hair, didn't they say there was like um, a bit of hair or something found on his bottom area, like a clump? Okay, 
I hope they check for DNA like saliva. I'm so curious about the recovered data from the ones who tried to factory reset their phones. I don't know if they didn't know that the data can be recovered or what. I thought everyone knows that it's never permanently deleted. Melanie, what evidence points to the fact that it's landed in the right hands? Good point. We are having a discussion. I sure hope that's the case. So it's not as an actual fact. So there's uncertainty. Not great, but there we go. But we do need to acknowledge that in that private interview when Caden mentioned this key video evidence of the highway of a form of foul play and tampering with evidence, the guys who were interviewing Caden seemed kind of shocked and surprised, like they didn't know about it unless they're just shocked that Caden knows about it, considering he's a, you know, within the case and whoever showed it to him, it could be a bit detrimental. So they're thinking, well... How did you get a hold of it? How did you know? You shouldn't be knowing this. It, only us. Yeah, different ways of looking at it, but it's basically Kathy Bingham was the one responsible. But then after that leaked or that hacked interview released publicly, Kathy Bingham then started publicly calling out Caden and having doubt within him, wondering, could he be responsible for Noah's death? Is it normal for Caden to do what he did after returning back to the party house? Well, I was completely... Um, being lenient towards the likes of Brylan Sweat, Mikey Lair, Isaac Rojas, who literally went to sleep like nothing happened. They seem to get a free pass, but Caden doesn't. So even though it's a bad thing that that interview was leaked, hacked, it did show Kathy Bingham's true colours. And I think that's been a bit of a reoccurring theme over time within the community. Humans showing their true colours. They could be within the case, or just within the community. They could be a civilian from anywhere, or local. You never know. Things happen. Factors trigger reactions. It can make it easier long term, so you know who and what you're dealing with. I know for sure. Justin Roy, October 2023, 10 hours ago. What? Is this in relation to when it was handed over or collected as evidence? Jalen... I think if they did have a video that was eight, five to eight seconds long with two men removing shorts, I think there would be lots of questions. In a supposedly groundbreaking video, there were four men there, one being a policeman or in a policeman's uniform. <laughs> what, fancy dress? One being a fireman, a volunteer firefighter. One was Bob Wilcoxon and the other one was a Newton. Well, was it really a Newton-related family member? Because Ken Pressey worded it like that in that private interview. And then when the police questioned him, Caden said, well, actually, I don't really know. I'm just kind of assuming. So he doesn't know for certain. That doesn't really help. Anyway, one's question is unsure. There we go. He just assumed, it, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not reading ahead. I'm just reading ahead in my mind. Sometimes it does mention a follow-up in... Brackets. I'm just so used to lacking context as I speak myself. I jump the gun, but it says it there. So, in this five to eight second long video, he supposedly saw the number 23 or 32 in the fireman's shirt. He also noticed the one guy was bold, and apparently the other three were not. And yet he could still focus on these two people taking the black shorts off. If you have a video like that, you're only looking at the main part, which would be somebody removing the shorts, not the details of who's removing the shorts, who's standing around in the background and what number is on the shirt. That makes no logical sense to me. But you would pick up on more details like that the longer you're in the presence of that video. If, if it's a video that you can re-watch over and over again, you will pick up on more details with time. I mean, in the equivalent, you got a hiker that goes out into the Mojave Desert looking for missing hiker Kenny Veach, records what they can out there. They might not notice everything, but then when replaying the footage back afterwards or when a member of the general public watches the footage back on YouTube, they see a lot more and then more and more with time because they've got the opportunity to watch it. But in the moment, if you were there as a witness, you might not remember it all, but as long as you record it, that's what matters. Caden wasn't there to see or record it, but he was shown the footage after, supposed by Kathy Bingham, at the Caden's place of living. So there's that. Anything else? I would also like to know when this took place. If there was a fireman, there were also law enforcement, and Newton along with Bob, but Jack Newton wasn't there in this video. This all had to take place after 5.30 when Caden left the scene, but before 
43 when Tyler Hardy called 911. Right, what this person says is almost correct, except for the 543. That it wasn't Tyler Hardy. It was Tyler, last name, not really mentioned. Tyler, and then you got Tyler Hardy. Tyler, Tyler Hardy called around 546, unsuccessful because of static, bad signal. 553, Tyler Hardy called one last time and it was successful. The original Tyler, another Tyler, called at 543. That was the only correction that was needed. But how it's worded here is exactly how I've been wording it in the past. And it's very important. See, this is the thing. I know people can say, oh, we're just going round in circles with events and discussions. Some might. But along the way, I do point out important factors. And one of the most reoccurring patterns of important significance is the time difference, the time frame window between such and such a time. Was there enough time in between that window for things to take place? Is it practical? Is it realistic or not? That doesn't just apply to the highway scene. It can apply to the side by side rollover, to the shower situation and beyond. And I don't think it gets looked into enough, but as said, I've documented it on my channel. I've done really comprehensive map analysis, timelines, projects, time difference, making sense of it, reinforcing the importance behind it. So if anyone is interested in that theme of coverage, you can always look back on my channel. All videos are publicly available to watch. So. Jack Newton wasn't there in the video. Ellie, Volunteer Firefighter, weren't there till after 6.15am. So somebody needs to make it make sense to where in less than 13 minutes all these people pulled up to the scene, got out, did all this business, apparently took the shorts back to the party house at some point and, and then left the scene before the truck drivers got there. But yet the truck driver was supposedly filming this. Please make it make sense. Well, that's the thing. From what I'm aware of, there's like two sets, two sets of pairs, truck drivers. So what time are we saying? Around 5.15 at least when Jack returned back to the house to let everyone know. And then returning back to the highway. And then Caden getting there for the very first time with his guys at 5.20. Two truck drivers present but not called Tyler or Tyler Hardy. So like a first wave of truck drivers, identity unknown, which is very problematic, isn't it? Will we ever get the identities of the first pair of truck drivers? Because it would help a lot. After Caden told to leave and the guys, Jack remains on site. After 5.30, at what point does Jack leave? I wonder. In order for the hidden footage to take place and Jack to be out of shot or out of sight. What pair of truck drivers or what truck driver supposedly was the one responsible for recording the highway footage? Probably still the first wave. The Tyler and Tyler Hardy, they came later. It sounds like a bit of double vision. Is it really different sets of people or is it the same ones? Because if it's the same ones, it doesn't add up in terms of the timing of it all, right? So, there are little factors along the way or questions which could really clear it up, such as the identities, the names of the first set of truck drivers at around 5.15 up to 5.40. I say 5.40, it's not an official timestamp that, but I just used it before the 5.43 first call made by Tyler, a truck driver. Because Tyler and Tyler Hardy, when they were there, or passing by at least, such as Tyler, because he couldn't stop, no one was there, no one parked up. But there was something in the middle of the road, turned out to be white shorts. Supposedly, Jack Newton's white shorts, which were borrowed by Noah, even though Caden saw that Noah was wearing his own shorts at the highway when dead. How did the white shorts appear at the highway? Well, it's linked, likely, to this hidden footage of the Noah's black shorts being removed, 
white shorts being replaced. But how did the white shorts end up on the highway if the goal was to replace the black ones and put the white ones on nowhere so he wasn't naked? Well, previously people have highlighted, maybe do it in a rush. 13 minutes or so to get it all done. Bit of a rush, possibly. Um, if they felt someone was onto them or in the distance, they might have been like, oh, screw this, we're not going to try and put the shorts back on, we'll just chuck them in the air and just leave, flee the area before the court or scene. It's the only way of really looking at it at this moment in time. But I thought I'd just add that bit on. You can always let me know down below. But it's a good comment what this person has said. It's helpful. Tiffany says, and if the police officer was on duty there, would there be a dash cam and or body cam footage? I mean, could they have turned it off or left it in their vehicle when inspecting the scene? Those things can't just be turned off or deleted without some sort of notification being sent to the superior officer. Right, so if it was left on, but could it have been left in the vehicle? Um... It depends who the superior officer is. Would the superior officer turn a blind eye if there was anything happening? Jalen, not only that, if they were filming a criminal scene and didn't know anybody, why would they not involve showing everybody like Jack and how was their time so impeccable to come right after Ken Pressey was there? Tiffany, people are giving a group of teenagers a local backwards law enforcement way too much credit. This isn't some big government conspiracy cover-up. To have that many people involved and nobody to have spoken about it over a year later doesn't make any sense whatsoever. In what world would a group of barely legal teenagers be able to pull something off like this and keep quiet about it over a year later without mentally or emotionally spiralling? But then again, you got to ask yourself, are there a couple of partygoers that were already doing things in the past and it didn't phase them one bit? because they felt invincible, or they could get away with stuff. See, there might be 30 to 40 people at the party, but depending what day you choose that on, because Caden has changed from Friday, Saturday, 30, 40, so before that, it was Sunday. Whatever day. Monday, how many people present? 10 people present at the party? 15? Round that, roughly? And out, out of 10 or 15 people, how many were aware of something. You can whittle it down and there might not be as many people as you think that are responsible or in on it. it. Could be a handful or a small group of people. And if that small group of people can hold it together for whatever reason, whether they've got experience, whether it's just their mentality, psychologically speaking, you know what I'm saying? Some people can be cold. Things happen. Look at James Brenner. In the Dylan Brown's case, kept cold, cool, did not react. Okay, lie detector failed on that. Not great, is it? But did he break down in the end? It was more so a plea deal, bargaining, so he could benefit out of it. So it's a bit of a selfish reason. Is there some kind of plea deal that can happen here? I guess not. Not at this moment, at least. I mean, what would the plea deal be? You know, no, it is not a missing body. So there's no bargaining there. Deals or offers have attempted to be made to get someone to speak out, reach out with information leading to a possible conviction. And that hasn't been successful either. Okay. Well, why does it do that? Pissing me off. Just for now, if OHP is the agency leading the investigation, the investigators would be fully aware of any video, so its existence wouldn't be withheld as part of any plea deal negotiations for anyone. So the video is what if scenarios printed in the discussion wouldn't apply. It was Michael Faye's cast months ago that did say he handed the footage of the highway scene with the shorts being tampered with, evidence, to his local FBI office. How successful was that? Can Michael Faye's cast give an update regarding it? If so, feel free to drop a comment down below. And if he doesn't watch it, anyone watching right now who may be a part of different pages on Facebook, feel free to, you know, share it on, pass it on. Just to say, what do we have here? Andrea Chubrov says, Paul, oh, a poll. I thought I was the poll master. We've got another person. Do you believe there's a video of four men on scene taking off nose black shorts? Let's discuss. You could say, well, aren't we going backwards now? Of course it exists. It's what Caden has said. It's what Michael Faiskaz has said. Well, look, this is the thing. You can still be sceptical. 
when you haven't seen the footage yourself. Obviously, it's a trust game. You've got to believe in what people say as like a fact that, yes, it does exist and there is evidence out there, but it can also be difficult as well. As time goes on and more people play up and you see it elsewhere and some get burnt and it just creates trust issues. And if you ain't seen the footage, you can still be skeptical. There's no harm in that. Others may do it as a defense mechanism. Do I believe that there is footage out there based off what a handful, maybe not a handful, what a couple of people have said here and there? There seems to be some truth within it. And then if you used to add in that CCTV footage of uh, Kathy Bingham at Caden Pressey's place of living, even though Caden wasn't in shot, which is unfortunate, Alicia Lee was in the husband. And it appeared that Kathy was showing them a video because the screen was moving. There was movement on screen, like a video. If it's a photo or a screenshot, it tends not to move whatsoever. I mean, right now, my video right here is a screen recording. So if I drag up or down, you're going to see it move up and down aren't you? And if you used to play the video back, as in this live premiere, you will see it go up and down. So you're basically watching a video. Whereas if it's completely static, not moving whatsoever, no audio either, then it's just a photo. See, there seemed to be a misunderstanding within the Dylan Rounds case when it came to a time lapse. People were like, what does this mean? I, I don't know. It's just, it's just photos. That's all it is. It's not a video. It's never a video. Come on, man. Get a grip. It was resolved in the end. But you had to repeat it over and over again. It couldn't get into people's thick schools. And yet I was talking based off experience because I've done time-lapse videos myself. Right? It's not that difficult. But you, you saw how it went. You know, some witnesses still remember it. It was, it was just a complete disaster. So when it comes to this situation, there might be a few little links. But percentage-wise, 116 votes say that there is a video, 37 say there isn't, 28 undecided. If the video does exist, what would fit into Ken Pressey's scenario since he was at the scene and says no, it was in black shorts? So once again, I think Christina is a little bit behind because if you remember, just in general, when we are on Facebook previously and we're looking at the Jack Newton situation, Wow, the tables turned there, didn't it? Whoa, what happened? I don't know. It was a bit dodgy. But let's just let's just check the comments here. There's no harm. Carla, I believe there is, or it would have never been mentioned. Uh, well, you've seen Dina Rose as mentioned a lot, which supposedly didn't happen, but it was still mentioned. So a bit of a, a weak point that, just in my opinion. Robbie... If only everything that was mentioned was true, I'd be saying every day I'm a millionaire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've wondered why someone would completely make this up. Wonder who was the first person to bring up the video. Who was the first person to mention it? Well, this is only to my knowledge from what I saw the very first time around. It was what Michael Fazekas had to say on one of the Facebook pages mentioning how there was an original copy, but then there was two to three people that have copies, you know, secondary videos. So you got the you got the original video, but then you got two to three people with copies of it. And uh, Michael was saying now, oh, you know, some people need to reach out to. I don't know if anyone remembers it. I did document it on my channel. Tim. I feel like I heard this very early on, back when the golf clubs were first mentioned, Ooh, roughly. Mm -hmm. Hearing it was at that big, explosive, groundbreaking post. Justin Roy says to Pam, I don't think the video was ever supposed to be brought up, to be honest, but somehow Kathy showed Caden Pressey and Alicia the video at her house in which she recorded it, and then Kathy tried to say it was just a picture, yet you can see movement when it was zoomed in, so not sure. He mentioned it first. Well, I, I saw Michael Fay's cast actually mention it. I said, go to my channel, look back to my previous videos, you'll find it there, the discussions, some months ago. But um, just in response to Justin Roy, well, was, yeah, there is CCTV footage of Kathy Bingham showing the video or the phone with contents on it on the screen to Alicia and the husband. Caden Pressey was not on camera. 
I believe Michael Fazek has said he was, but it was just a short clip of the CCTV footage. It wasn't the full length video. I think what would be helpful, instead of just saying, well, there's longer footage out there of Caden Pressy in shot, but we're not going to share. I think if someone got like a still screenshot of the extended footage of Caden sat down or nearby, that would go a long way. Is that possible? I know people shouldn't have to prove themselves, but just to fill in the loose ends along the way. It's the same what I do with cases and mysteries when I find stuff. Justin, not sure what rabbit hole you're talking about. I don't know why Justin's responding back to Pam, but there's no, like, at symbol. Is that because Pam's no longer on this page, or has she been blocked? I don't know. Normally, when you respond back to someone, it'll be highlighted in blue, like that Justin Roy blue. But this one's not highlighted. So... Pam Garrison is an individual that complained about my channel talking too slow. But Pam, I believe this Pam, correct me if I'm wrong, apologies in advance, but I know that there is a Pam that is a part of the Sofa Sleuth page, who's also a part of this page too, or the army one. Just be cautious. Obviously, there will be some people on the Sofa Sleuth page, not in support, but like a spy, an informant. It is what it is. I get it. Anyway, Justin, not sure what rabbit hole you're talking about, but Ellie has had the video since October 2023. Not even sure why anyone would bring it up. Again, the first time I heard it on social media was that encounter with Alicia Caden Pressy and Kathy. Wow. Wow. So Justin Roy has only heard about it through the Alicia Lee situation, Caden Pressy and Kathy Bingham. And that's recent. So I heard about it, not in 2023, because I wasn't even around. I heard about it in 2024, but m months before this, what Justin Roy was referring to, and it's documented on my channel. Christina, if Ellie has had the video since October, which is a year ago, why has it not been given to Noah's family or released to prove its validity? I know if I had a video that showed a crime was committed, I'd give police a year to act on it. Why would they show the family evidence? There are certain things they will not show the family for their own good, just like Kathy works for the family supposedly, yet why does she show Alicia and Kane Pressy the video but not the family? I do not have the answer to this. Mm. Just makes no sense. If Ellie has had the video for a year and they act like it doesn't exist, why those that possess the video wouldn't try to get into the hands of someone that could push the case along? It doesn't seem the Ellie has the video, has the video care to do anything with information. And why wouldn't Kathy show the family the video? That makes no sense either. Just another reason. I don't think it exists. It's definitely moving along. Again, I can't answer that, but she did show Alicia and Kevin Pressy. You can go back and clearly see the video. Well, if we're referring to the CCTV footage of video, there was no proof Caden Pressy was present in that short clip that was posted online. If there is an extended video, feel free to share, because then that will clear it up. Andrea Jobrov says, I would think if Kefi was showing anyone, it would be Noah's actual family who she's working for. Mm. Why did Kefi specifically show it to Caden Pressy family? Why exactly them? Why exactly them? Does anyone know or guess? Christina, no way that video was long enough to show all that Caden Pressy described happening in it. The video she showed, um, EP, Alicia. Alicia, I don't know, it was less than one second long. Also, not much reaction at all to the video. You could think watching someone take shorts off a dead body would cause. Well, to be honest, that CCTV footage wasn't the whole length. It just a, it looks like an, a portion of it. And it was more than one second long, actually. And there was audio as well picked up. Jalen, if there was a video... And I don't believe there is. And it was supposed to be shown to all three of the presses. Why would they not show on the security camera Kathy Bingham showing all three of them? Kathy Bingham said she only showed a picture to Alicia. She never showed it to... Who's SP? Or KP? Caden Pressy. And I think that the security camera from the presses is evidence that she was saying was correct. Justin says, so there's definitely a video... But she only showed part of her camera recording the CCTV. There we go. 
she didn't show it all. Also, I have no idea why Kathy Bingham didn't show the family. Only she can answer that. Heard about it three or four months ago. Yep, yep, that might tie in with me. End of June. I couldn't see the actual video. I saw movement, looks like something. At the end of the day, I believe Kathy Bingham said she wasn't showing a video. It was like a photo, but a photo doesn't move. If it does move, then it must be a video or a GIF. One or the other. Are you talking about the... Okay. It was stated it was something that Ace Lee guy had come up with before. We all know he was a con artist, so I wouldn't believe anything he sent. Uh-oh. Let's click that off. No way there was a video because if this video existed, it would have been leaked. It would have been leaked. Well, that interview was hacked or leaked, whatever you want to call it. If they don't trust law enforcement, bring it to media or something. I'd do whatever it took. The amount of inside people and key players even just on these pages is a high number and several things have been leaked before. I think if it would be leaked by now, given people, oh yeah, this has been leaked, that's been leaked, but oh no, we don't have it anymore. So what, are you saying that the shower footage was leaked? Does anyone have a screenshot? Nope. Did anyone archive it? Nope. What about the side-by-side -side rollover? Was that ever leaked? Maybe. Was it screenshotted? Nope. Was it archived? Nope. Right, you see, it's problematic. Now, if you're not aware at the time it's going to be removed or silenced afterwards, then you can't be blamed. But if you've been aware previously, you need to adapt. Look, with the Kenny Veach case, things appear and then disappear after. You've got to be fast. You've got to take screenshots. You've got to save and download stuff because you never know what will happen next. Learn with time. That's what needs to be applied here within this case, unless it's too late by now. Maybe Ellie does have it, or... Okay. So, yeah, pretty much that. If it's real, why not work harder to get it to the right hands? I mean, Michael Facecast did give it to his local FBI office, he said. I don't know how successful that was. Exist. It was a leaked interview tape, remember, to try and discredit Ken Presley's timeline... But all it did was highlight the fact that a videotape exists of people in uniform removing their shorts. CCTV footage, existence of this tape. Uh, what else? I believe it now. The interview of Ken Pressy is real, but no one can prove Kathy has a video of a crime being committed against Noah. I mean, has Christina been a bit passive? I don't know. I agree we cannot see what was on the video being shown on the CCTV between the PI and the EP. Alicia, Alicia Lee. I, I, I've, I've always been used to saying E-L, Alicia Lee, not Alicia Pressy. I don't know why. I was shown to prove what had been said. Now, the PI stated it was a picture being shown, but there was movement in the picture. Yeah. I don't want to spend too long on this because people might think going a bit round and round in circles, but if you do want to... Stephanie Bacon. I'm sorry you're sick. Oh, Stephanie Bacon is sick. I mean, you had that healing video previously. Mika. I just feel as though if there was a video showing what had been described, it would have definitely been out by now. What? Public? What about the, oh, what about the meta video? That should be public too. If no one had been arrested. Right, so there's such critical evidence, someone should have been arrested by now. But you could have it both ways, where you got hard evidence, it's critical, it could prove something, show someone's guilty or some responsible. But it doesn't lead to anything, because those in, in, um, in power or have the final say to make the next move choose not to do anything, because they don't want to. And then that would tie with the corruption part. And with the last video that I did on Kevin, this case, the theme of corruption, it was very evident. So it could have a knock-on effect. Right, I think we'll leave it there. That'll do, that's enough text. And we can just check the one out here to do with the Snapchat. Joyce Berger. So, something for everyone to know, because we all know this is old and over with. So, remember when they tried? Who is they? Are you talking about Brooke Bounds Carter? 
to state that one of the guys who was with Caden Pressey was in this picture. It was Mikey Lair with Avery Combs and Logan Jernigan. Jack Newton stated in his interview with Punch in True Crime that Mikey Lair was still wide awake, so that would make two inconsistent stories. And the timing says September 4th, 2023 at 5.27am. So I don't know why we're talking about... Uh, it must have been another comment elsewhere about 5.30. Someone must have rounded it up, but exactly 5.27am. A time of when Cade and Pressey, about three minutes before leaving the highway, being told to leave. So Caden would have been at the highway at that time with the three other guys. But supposedly there is a Snapchat which shows one of the three guys, along with Caden, who wasn't actually there and still at the house, which would highlight Caden as a liar. But... People have said Snapchat timestamps can be altered with to suit a certain agenda in a false way. So does that to take in mind too. And furthermore, what really doesn't help is, yeah, you can whip out a Snapchat post and show the timestamp as proof, but where's the actual photo? Oh, it's behind that like grey box overlay. Well, that's not useful, is it? I don't see it. Do you? Nope. They should have showed... Two side-by-side -side photos, one of that and then one of what the actual content was, which made it a little bit more simple. What else? The reactions. Chaz, is this to show a Snapchat being deleted around 5.30 that Monday morning? Joyce Berger, they've tried to state how was Mikey Lair was still sleeping and how could he be at the scene with Kay and Pressy? Well, if he's still sleeping, how could he be awake at 5.30? We all know that photos can be altered. You mean the timestamp? Well, I know Kay and Pressy stated at one point in time between Brian and Sweat and Mikey Lair that they had switched places where they were laying down. Like, one of them got up to do something, but then when they went down to the scene after Jack Newton busted through the door, Ken and Pressy said Mikey Lair was with them as well, so Mikey Lair couldn't have been asleep at that time. Uh, well, maybe at some point in time this case will possibly be solved. No, he couldn't have been... Mikey Lair and Brown and Sweat switched spots in the living room. This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I mean, I've done a map analysis of it, in case anyone's wondering. This Snapchat doesn't occur in the living room, I can tell you that, and the girls aren't crying like Ken and Pressy described either. Ah, so Christina Thompson, once again. A very interesting character. What I'd say, in motion is like a, a psychological experiment. Anyone watching right now as a witness or so, just keep tabs on certain named individuals because we could see a behavioural shift with time. You know me and my predictions. Just take it in mind in the background. I'm not talking about the Snapchat whatsoever. What are you talking about? The Snapchat picture that goes along with the post. But where's the picture? All I see is a bloody grey box with the time. Why can't people just link two photos together? How hard is it? Christina, at 527, Michael, Mikey Lair was not asleep in the living room. So how could he have been asleep in there at 515, like Ken Pressy claims? I mean, 5.15 is before 5.27. 5.15, people could have been asleep. And then when Jack alerts people as to what's happened, oh, everybody wakes up. Wow. I was not referring to the snap. I was talking about how Ken and Pressy said Mikey Lair and Brian Sweat switched spots whilst Ken and Pressy was sleeping, not Avery. Oh, my God. You see how confusion can come in about with language and wording. Oh, boy. And Becca says, I'm not referring to anything other than the fact that Cade and Pressy said Mikey Lair and Brian Sweat switched spots when Cade and Pressy is sleeping. That is it. Let me add some context in before any other humans lose the plot and turn into gorillas. Reality is, from what's said by Cade and Pressy in this timeline, at 2.42am, Brylan, um, yeah, Mikey Lair and Brylan Sweat were sleeping in certain spots. I can't remember which way round it was. I'm going to be honest. One was on the floor. The other one was on a chair or a piece of furniture for those that get triggered. Okay. After 2.42, the next time Caden 
woke up. It was at 5.15 from what he said. And when he was awoken by the news of what Jack had to say about Noah's death, where Brylan was sleeping at 2.42, and where Mikey was sleeping at 2.42, the roles, the positions were reversed at 5.15. Switched places in between 2.42 to 5.15. Things happened. Okay. Christina says, and I'm saying the snap has Mikey Lair in it, and he's not on the couch at 5.27am. That's all I'm saying. So he's not on the couch. Where is he? What's he doing? What room is he in? My goodness. I never said he was. I was only agreeing with Chaz. Right. So, obviously, it's a bit of a disaster already, the conversations. Jack saying that a person was wide awake when his picture was taken would mean that Jack was at the house at 5.27am, as he wouldn't, uh, wouldn't otherwise know if Mikey Lair was awake or asleep. That's really crucial. Well, as this person appears in a timestamp photo from 9.4, 5.27am, and they seem to be asleep. Who's asleep, who's not asleep? Ugh, can't even see a fucking photo. All I see is a grey box. Where is the photo? It's like Gordon Ramsay saying, where's the lamb sauce? Where's the photo? I need it. Where is it? My God. <sighs> Sleep or not? Mute. What the? What does mute mean? It's like a cow. Okay, I get your point. But so, if Jack is there, how come one minute Mikey Lair is asleep and then next he's wide awake? Oh, boy. What are we going to talk about next? Who sleeps with teddy bears and who sleeps with bunny rabbits? Right, let's move on to my comments. I've already adjusted it to the newest comments. And we just work our way up bit by bit. If people didn't know, this is on the theme of a high-profile individual, the city manager of Warwicka being arrested and charged with what was it, you know, sexual stuff to do with younger people. More context in the video beforehand if you check that out. Available the I symbol top right corner of the screen. Skeptical, knowing that the family is sharing this news suggests the matter is significant and relevant. Corruption manifests in various forms and it is disheartening when law enforcement is involved in a case for reasons other than positive ones, such as corruption or incompetence. In the case of Dylan Rounds, Box Elder County wouldn't respond to incidents in Lucent due to the considerable distance from their office. Yes, how incompetent is that? I'll watch and replay. See this thing. Whenever it comes to Skeptical's comments, for most of it, I tend to have an easy time in reading it. I don't spaz out. It's just easy to read. I think it's just because of, you know, higher-end sentence structuring. It's much better. Victor, shady people. Corrupt people and shady for sure. What was that last question on the chat you sent? I don't understand. Safia. His charges are telling what kind of people are involved in the city, government, law enforcement. It explains a lot. Girl, what's that? Girl be natural. So, if he's hiding evidence, who the real killer? Yes, true, troubling. Yes, I messed up my question. Have others gotten the feeling that jackass wouldn't... <laughs> wouldn't more than a friendship with Noah? Noah wasn't having it, and no, Noah distanced himself from jackass. I don't know. Trisha. Well, I don't think he was gay, but you never know. Hmm. I think it's probably in relation to that whips cream, isn't it? And wearing dresses. And then someone tried making a conspiracy that the reason why I was kicked from a page was because I was talking about people in dresses. <laughs> okay, Trisha. Thank you, Wallet Ref. You're welcome. Cleo, good work. Appreciate that. Safia, I think it's very significant within the case. Thanks, Raf. You too. Appreciate that. Cleo, thank you for the updates. You're welcome. Ajax, not seen Ajax for a while. Um, is that Morse code? I don't know. There are the time identifiers of key moments of this scam. Oh, I'm not too sure. You're welcome, girl. Carl, just in general, when someone is arrested for sexual abuse, meanwhile, I get so angry at these twisted a-holes. If he's proven guilty, I hope they throw the book at him. Also, Diddy is a fraud and the black Jeffrey Epstein... I hope he gets his due as well. A lot of famous people, even some politicians, were at this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like you said, well, like Raf, if the OSBI is putting this guy in jail, a high level city manager, then they might be hoping the no Presgrove growth case too. You'd hope so. And if not, then it must be even more important then. 
if a high level city manager can be taken away and justice served, a person of a higher position, if someone like Noah Presgrave, who is simply a civilian but a victim within a separate case, if the same level of justice isn't met, then there must be a, a much deeper running thing, right? Carl. When you mentioned the unfortunate boating accident with the seven-year-old daughter of the friends of Caleb Newton, uh, obviously don't know the details of how she got caught in the boat propeller. Well, probably, well, fell off the boat and drifted aside near to the propeller, made contact lightly. But Caleb must have been either very distracted by something or extremely careless for a supposedly experienced boat captain. I think he was more than buzzed. I'll admit, I've driven a buzzard after a few beers at a pub when I was a little younger, but I drove very slowly along all the back roads home. It was wrong, I regret it, but I was still functioning. I was thinking about my safety all the way. Caleb must have been really effed up to not see the girl. Robbie, ah, we've got Robbie again. From the news articles I've read, he was driving at idle speed, which is less than five miles per hour. I looked up his specific boat, a 2007 Mastercraft. They mentioned in the article she was on the swim deck, which is a really small deck off the back of the boat, per the images on Google of his specific boat. If he was driving, he would most likely have been facing forward since they were near the boat ramps, not the back of the boat where the swim deck was. She fell off the swim deck where there was the moat and the propeller are. If she was on the swim deck and they were going less than five miles per hour, it's likely it was a freak accident. I have three grown children when mine were that young. If they were out on the lake, it was my responsibility to watch the kids, not someone 10 feet away driving the boat. Both her parents were on the boat. What were they doing? Both her parents were on the boat. I don't think they were, but then again, what age were they? What age were those parents? Because... How it was worded in one of the articles, what I read, they said you had Caleb Newton, who was 36 years old at the time in 2020, along with another adult who was 37 years old. Who was that? And then as for the other people, the age ranges were as low as five years up. And it was like 10, 11 people. So, interesting. Okay. Some key comments already. Just existing. Appreciate that. Will do more videos to come. Carl said, is this guy who killed Noah? They got him good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, I'm not too sure, but I'm sure Kyle Simpson has been a bit of a problematic person in the past with some of their comments made. And they might have even directed some towards me. But now, you know, they're making a show of themselves by clearly making false claims. Or suggestions. Cece says, what? That's not what he said, exactly. Fairy, this guy has nothing to do with Noah. Wishful thinking. Nothing to do with Noah, but the theme? Links. And the family believe it links for him to be sharing it on the justice page. John, so did they say they're going to try these murderous kids away, or are they going to shrug it off? Who knows? Doug, this is significant in that Warwick and Terrell are only 20 miles apart and in the same county. And at least, we never forget, this still is and always will be Oklahoma. The whole state, which is arguably a bastion of corruption. Keep in mind, however, that whilst even corrupt authorities would arrest someone for a crime they find to be as disgusting as this, they may not ever be inclined to do the same to a relative or one of their own. Hmm, maybe. Coyote, as in coyote. It all started with a teenage male phone exchange student that was in Cody's home. Cody is the son of Rex Dunn, a professional rodeo clown and bullfighter. That's a, a mixture. Rex was inducted into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame in 2010 and was the first person to be placed in the hallowed hall in the three different categories. Clown, bullfighter, stock contractor. This is a black mark on the Dunn legacy, innocent until proven guilty. Uh, okay. Alan, finally, thank the Lord they got him. Junie, a lot of authorities are corrupt to the core in the US now. Anyway, thank you for your update with this man. It'd be very interesting. This can be linked to any of the people that attended the party. Could bring a few. You're welcome. What? Donald Trimp. 
filed bank ruptured six times, one trillion dollars. Imagine that, these government getting away. We can imagine a movie about it. What are these emojis? Oh my God. Sonny, what a sicker, great content. Appreciate that. Cheers, you're welcome, 42. Are they making headway in the case? I need to catch up. Well, some say progress is being made, but on the public surface level, doesn't seem to be the case. You've had new reward money being put out then. Some of the family members, uh, the uh, the grandmother, Deborah Smith, you know, kind of advertising it, spreading that awareness, but some think it's a step backwards, trying to, you know, use money as an incentive when I thought it was beyond that point. But, you know, that appears to be it for the comments. We've hopefully found this discussion somewhat interesting. Be sure to like and share to spread the awareness and my additional thoughts on top. And as for the next video, Depending on how the previous one does, I'm going to be trying to focus in on a unique map analysis. And then past that point, I can do a map analysis on this case. Some outside of the box video ideas have come up. It's just unfortunate that shit's gone on recently with this stupid internet and bits and bops. So I had to push things back. So I'm ready, I'm focused, and can hit hard. So be on the lookout for a couple of different videos with time. We'll leave it there for now, as of tonight. Thanks for watching, goodbye and good night.